Welcome back to Bay Sunday. I'm Elizabeth Cook. Today we have an author, also the founder of Brown Capital Management. His uplifting autobiography takes you through his life as an adolescent and the steps he took to conquer the world of finance. His powerful book inspires business success and wealth. Please welcome author of Beating the Odds, Eddie Brown's Investing in Investing and Life Strategies. Eddie Brown, thank you so much. For thank you. It's a in. pleasure to be here. So tell me what inspired, first of all, talk about the title, Beating the Odds. Why did you choose that title? Well, you know, it's kind of a situation of coming from zero, mm -hmm. poverty, being able, getting a good foundation educationally to basically create a successful firm from scratch. As my daughters and wife said when I started Brown Capital in 1983 from nothing, mm -hmm. you know, they said, gee whiz, you have zero assets under management, you have zero income. How are you going to do this? So it's a kind of a trail of how one in America, mm -hmm. great country, through entrepreneurship, hard work, great educational foundation, and experience can actually create a thriving business. And that message, I'm sure, has a big impact, especially now during this down economy. What do people? What do you really want people to get out of your book? What's the number one well, thing? Well, I think to get out? you know it's it covers, or it's relevant. I would think mm -hmm. to such a wide range of people. For I would say from middle school age all the way through college, even adults, uh, especially adults with entrepreneurial drive and spirit and ideas of building something from nothing. You know, the president, uh, Barack Obama, is talking about the necessity of innovation, entrepreneurship, and kind of made in America. So it's really uh, a story of possibilities, being African American, being born in the rural South to a 13-year-old unwed mother. Um, you know, I always say people cannot control the hand that they have been dealt. What they can control is how they play that hand. And if one looked at my hand, 13-year-old unwed mother in abject poverty, you know, how do you play that hand? Well, through, I guess, good grandparents, good guidance with an uncle. I don't know what the word entrepreneurship meant, but what I do remember is I never remember him as having ever worked for anyone except himself. So there were certain seeds that were planted very early, the importance of a good education planted by my grandmother, possibilities of creating something from nothing, the entrepreneurial drive and spirit planted by my uncle. And actually it was those teachers in the early years that planted some seeds. They kept saying, Eddie, you are very smart you have to go to college. So I began to believe that I was very smart and I guess that's how I skipped a grade. That's how at 15 I was a senior in high school, had done very well academically. So um, you know there are certain things that are identifiable I say for one that even has aspirations of being an entrepreneur, having their own business. First of all, good, a good idea first of all, uh, a good solid educational background for whatever it is you're thinking of doing, capital, enough money to survive, I would say at least three to five years without taking an income, um, experience preferably on someone else's payroll for at least five to ten years, and if you're married, an understanding spouse that will stand with you during those difficult times and certainly there will be difficult times when you don't know how you're going to make the next payroll who will be there with you and give you support and if you have all of those things in place then I think you have a reasonable high probability of succeeding. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know right now there are a lot of people that are out of work had to take, take pay cuts and are really just worrying about putting food on the table and right. hopefully they can pay their bills and keep their home, maybe. Mm -hmm. I can imagine it's probably hard for them to think that far ahead as being an entrepreneur and investing their wealth wisely. Right. What kind of advice would you give to those people? Well, I think, you know, the first thing is to have uh, hope mm -hmm. and faith and believe in this free enterprise system 
America. And it's going to be kind of a slow rebuilding phase. So you have to have uh, patience. But before one can even think about, say, investing, you know, you have to be able to figure out how to get some kind of job. And you may have to get a job below your skill level just to survive, put food on the table, and then gradually build back to your capability. Uh, and it's only after basically satisfying the basic needs, as you said, putting food on the table, caring for your family, that you can start thinking about putting something aside mm -hmm. for investments. But for the smaller investor, um, when you get back above ground zero, uh, then you should set aside a portion, you know, whether it's 10%, some portion of that after-tax income that you can think about investing. And you should put it away on a monthly basis. And the best way to do that is through, for the smaller investors, through mutual funds. All right. You know? Thank you so much for joining us, Eddie Brown. If you would like a copy of the book, it's available at your local bookstore and online at beatingtheodds with eddiebrown.com. Stay tuned for more on Base Sunday.